Welcome back. Monday. We apparently have two games tonight. Two Monday night games. What's happening? I thought I thought this was a normal world where, you know, there was one Monday night game, but two? I gotta check when these are, because this is getting ridiculous. Jags Bills, 730. Commanders Bengals, 815. How am I supposed to watch all that football? I mean, I do have the screens for it, but that means I got to stay in here with my TVs. I can't do that. Most regular folks, they got, you know, their one big TV or they got a laptop. It's just at some point you're going to cross the streams. And as Ghostbusters told us, never cross the streams. I, I don't know. I guess the scheduling didn't work out. Could you do like Tuesday night football? I'm, I'm not sure. That doesn't quite have the ring to it that Thursday night or Friday night. Every night football, why not? This was, um, this used to be, you know, just a, a ritual. Sunday. Sunday football. And then said, all right, Monday. Okay, we'll do, we'll do one more on Monday. Now it's two more on Monday. That's, I don't know. I know we all want more football, but is that what we want? At the cost of having to choose between the Bengals and commanders and the Jags Bills. I mean, I'm an AFC, uh, AFC East Patriots fan, so Jags Bills is probably what I'm going to care about the most. I mean, for a uh, $1 per bet degenerate sports gambler, it is good. There's a positive there because there's more parlay legs for me to lose at. <laughs> Like yesterday, uh, I think I put down four bets. Yeah, four. So I spent four whole dollars. And I did a couple with Andre. And I know he feels bad like he let me down. But hey, look, man, I was just ride or die. Ride together, die together. I want to. I want the same bets. I want to get hype if we both win. Because there's nothing worse than one person wins and the other person misses out because they didn't copy your bet exactly. It's just, that's the that's the worst feeling ever. You want to win with your buddy. Uh, and if you lose together, hey, misery loves company, right? So that's, uh, that's just the world that I'm in now. One of these $1 bets, though, is going to hit. I had one, I think it was a 14-legger, and if it hit with the boost, it would have been 38 grand for $1. That's nuts. Doesn't even, doesn't seem right. But you know what? They let me do it. I'm going to do it. Keep it under five bucks a Sunday. That's it. I've spent more on worse things in my life. Um, but yeah, so there's two Monday night football games. How do we feel about this? I'm not sure how to feel. I guess I'll try to experience some of it tonight. I will likely be at the gym though at 730. And so I'll probably catch the second half of both one or both of the games. And we'll we'll see how it goes. There's too many things. I feel like life is busy enough, but to add two Monday night games, is, it's too much. It's, too, it's literally too, too many. But let's go back to yesterday because Andy Dalton, the Red Rocket, is back. And this guy had a game, so they tell me, because I didn't watch. But he, in the second quarter, already had... I think more touchdowns than Bryce Young had had the whole season. And it's game three, so grain of salt there. But people are liking Andy Dalton. They look good. Oh, they have Adam Thielen? More than a Thielen? One of my former fantasy football team names. So he had a nice little day. Just, you know, scrolling some stats here. But oh, the Panthers, they go deep on the stats. I believe that was their first win of the season. So 36-22, Raiders just did not want to show up. Um, so the immediate reaction is, yeah, Andy Dalton is the move. We go ahead with him. I just, I don't know if it's guys wanted to play for Andy and they didn't want to play for Bryce or if he's just a vet and he's that good. Because I think Bryce is more talented. And I'm biased. I'm an Alabama fan, but. Maybe, yeah, maybe these guys just didn't want to get up for Bryce. I don't know. 
clearly they're talented enough to catch touchdowns. And also, maybe it was just the Raiders. Let's see what happens in week four with Andy Dalton and the Panthers. Um, but, hey, I like it. He's a vet. Love seeing a wily vet get in there and make things happen. Show people he's still got it. Uh, Chiefs-Falcons. The Chiefs. I, I couldn't watch all that game. I got tired. But I do know that the, the Chiefs won. The Chiefs won the match. Um, I didn't see this fourth down stop. You know, Kelsey started catching balls. He's been a little slow out of the gate. And I think Mahomes just slow and steady. You know, quietly the Chiefs are 3-0. and And my office pool pick is looking good for them to be the number one seed in the AFC. Even though I wish I could pick the Patriots, but we're just not good. We're, I don't. We're not going to make the playoffs. It's like the Red Sox. The Red Sox have been dead, but now their resurrected corpse is winning games. They won both games of a doubleheader. Hooray! And Tristan Casas did his best Shohei Otani impression with three home runs and seven ribs. Not quite Shohei, but three home runs in a game by anyone is impressive. So, it's good. We're showing signs of life for next year. And then Romy Gonzalez hit an absolute bomb to center field. It's like 400 plus, 450, I don't know. So, Sox, uh, hey, if you're going to a game, there's only a few games left, but they're going to they're gonna keep playing. The guys are playing like they're getting paid, like they should be, like it's a game because it's fun. So, that's the, the state of sports, right? Can't get too excited about the Sox. They're almost done. Patriots... Kind of know who they are after playing the Jets. And then we've got, you know, the Celtics are coming up. I'm getting excited for them. See if we can run it back to back. Uh, we can repeat as NBA champions. We'll see. And the Bruins, I believe, are on the ice for preseason. I know they're doing training camp. Must be preseason by now. Yeah, just the uh, sports biz. It's just tough talking about all this fun stuff, <laughs> all these games. Um, it's really about, for me, content. I was having this conversation with Tim this morning, um, as we do every day before we open up, um, just about you know, going back and forth on, is it enough? Is it too much? And I'm always of the opinion that you can never make enough videos. You can never post enough content. You can never post enough videos. Uh, you can certainly tweet the wrong things, post the wrong things, but get a risk it for the biscuit. So in business, at least opening a shop, I keep talking about this, but you got to make content, right? So even if I've made four videos for the day, I'll feel like I needed to make a fifth one. If I made five, six, etc. I don't think you can make enough content, which is why I'm doing this show every day. And I will be adding other stuff on top of it, like editing long-form videos. Because if you get somebody who's a super fan of you, and they pull up, let's just say it's this video today, and then they go back and watch your whole library, or most of it, right? I know if I'm a fan of somebody, like a YouTuber, like Casey Neistat, like I'll, watch, I'll try to watch every single video he's put out. Like at, some, at one point when he was doing the daily vlog, I just watched every single vlog. It was fun. Because it was every day. You never knew what he was going to do. So much work, though. That's got to be exhausting. And But it was reliable. It was there. And so that's what I do. Like, I'm here every day. I'm posting a video every single day. With, uh, with business, it's a little different with the shop. Sometimes I'm just going to do a quick tour. Hey, guys, I want to show off this product that we just got in. Check it out. We have these autographed baseballs. Or we have new cards in the case. Or we have a new case. Um, like we got some new cases. So that'll be something to film. And then it's like I can't film enough. There's not enough hours in the day. If there was more hours, I'd keep going. I'd keep making videos. Um, you never want to cu like curate your feed too much, I guess, is what I would have to say. Um, like Instagram, I think is a place where people do that a lot. And at the same time, look, you're free to do what you want, but if you're trying to get followers, influence, eventually monetize yourself as the product, your 
channel. Uh, what you're going to have to do is just post. Post and ghost. All right, let me explain that. Because you need to just post as much as you can. Don't get too uh, romantic about it, how it looks. Like the feed, I remember everybody was obsessed with how their feed would look with all the thumbnails. Who cares? You're posting to connect and make an impact. So post and ghost. Let's explain that. I make, I put up a picture, let's say, of myself at the gym, and I say 1% better. And then instead of posting it and just waiting and reading every single comment and looking at every single like, I just post and put the phone down and move on with my day. This is how you get in the mindset of being a producer and not a consumer of the content. Now, it's not bad to be a consumer. It's honestly, that's how you learn different formats and that's how I learn, all right, what's working, what's not working, what do I engage with as a consumer, what videos do I like, can I make those for myself that I can post to other folks that are online. Um, you can learn a lot, but if you, excuse me, <laughs> still tired, <laughs> but if you, if you only consume blindly, like if you just sit there and scroll and you're not critically watching a video here and there. I'm not saying everyone, but if you're not trying to pick it apart and learn from it, then you're just, um, you know, it's escapism. It's just blindly scrolling and watching stuff. There's a time and a place for that. But if you're coming to me and you're trying to be a brand, you're trying to make money with this eventually, right? Make an impact, whatever your goals are. You should be watching every commercial, every post, every tweet, every TikTok video, whatever, YouTube video, and look at it from the point of view of like, why did they make all these decisions? Because if you know you can edit a video, you're making decisions, right? And everybody's only posting stuff. They know exactly what's in the frame most of the time. Sometimes it's like, oh, there's a cup of coffee, like that one scene in Game of Thrones. I can't believe how that... Starbucks cup of coffee was just in the background of Game of Thrones, but it, it was in there. I missed it watching it live. <laughs> a lot of people did, but some people didn't. The internet's forever. Sometimes things end up in your frame and you just don't notice. It happens. Most of the time, though, it's highly curated. And that just tells me that if you've got the time to edit a video and put it up, you have the time to watch somebody else's video and learn the best things from it. So all that to say, you can never post enough. There's always more. But you need to stop, uh, you know, don't burn, don't get burnt out. At the end of the day, like at five or six o'clock or seven o'clock, have a time where you say, cut off, I'm compartmentalizing my business person over here. So... I do that when I go to the gym. I say, I'm not consciously going to make videos for the shop or for my brand. I'm going to go work out. And I will do a workout post because some people are following me for that. Just, you never know. A little bit of inspiration here and there. And it helps me stay consistent. Um, and it's cool to look back uh, as like a track record of, okay, on September 22nd, yesterday, I was at the gym, just getting it in before I went home. That's kind of how I um, think about it. So, you, and look, you can do it however you want. These are just my tips and opinions and what's got me to where I'm at. And I know that I'm going to have to do a lot more to get further. Like, I can't only do this daily video. I'm going to have to do more videos, maybe make this longer, maybe shorter, maybe tweak, whatever it is. <clears throat> I'm going to have to do an extra level of work to get to that next step. And mine just happens to be talking sports all the time, which is awesome. So I did watch a ton of football yesterday. That was good. But the thing I love about the gym on Sunday during the football season is it's always dead. It's great. You get access to all the machines. The turf track area was pretty much empty. There was probably like another 20 people in there. Huge gym, so... Not many people. 
And then I got home and watched the Sunday night game. So, back to the beginning of this, though. Monday, two games. I don't get it. It's too much. I'm really saying that's too much football. For Monday night. Sunday, all right, fine. But stagger them some more. 7.30 and 8.15 seems weird. So, yeah. What do you think about that? What do you think about the Monday night double header? That's what it is. Weird. Okay. Well, on with the day, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Peace.